Everybody, welcome to the Dennis Kirk Tech Tip of the Week. Uh, today, we're going to talk about changing the handlebars on your motocross bike. So why change a handlebar? Uh, well, there's a lot of reasons. First and most common is uh, crash damage. You crash a dirt bike, you bend the handlebar, you got to replace it because you can't ride crooked bars. Two, maybe you don't like the bend, the bend or sweep of the handlebar. The Husqvarna comes with a pretty flat, straight handlebar. and uh, we like a bend called the SX Race that ProTaper produces. It's a little higher and swept back a little bit more. The third reason could be you want to change the ride characteristic of your bike. Today we're going to install the ProTaper ACF handlebar on this bike. Um, the ACF handlebar is relatively new. It's the newest bar from ProTaper. It is claimed to be the lightest aftermarket aluminum handlebar on the market. Um, it features tapered wall aluminum. Thinner walls here, carbon fiber inserts on the end for strength and added vibration dampening. We've been actually riding with a prototype version of this for well over a year and love the way that it absorbs uh, engine vibration and doesn't transfer to the rider's hand. It also does a good job of absorbing track surface uh, imperfections, doesn't transfer the feedback to the rider's upper body. It's also super strong. We've cartwheeled several bikes with this on and it's come away straight every time. Uh, the ACF bar uh, was kind of designed out of necessity in the four-stroke era. As you can see, there's so many things on a four-stroke handlebar. There's a kill switch, map switch, starting button. A um, lot of uh, things on the handlebars and some traditional bars you run out of a little bit of room. So the ACF bar has a more radical rise. It has the same overall height but the rise is more radical so that there's a wider flat area on the bar for a mounting surface. The tools needed for this chore are a Phillips screwdriver, a socket or T-handles with a three millimeter Allen, uh, eight millimeter socket and 10 millimeter socket. The Husqvarna comes stock with ODI lock-on grips. Lock-on grips are a uh, development in off-road motorcycling probably the past 10 years, uh, eliminates the uh, glue process. We're gonna use the Pro Taper clamp-on grip, similar design. Um, we like the clamp-ons because it eliminates the glue. Uh, glue in wet conditions or uh, if you crash, you could tear your grip and dirt gets in there. Um, but a glued, glued on grip, no matter how well it's safety wired on, can tend to spin or fail. We've never experienced a failure with a clamp-on grip. It's a mechanical attachment and one that we feel you could rely on. Might seem like kind of a obvious no-brainer, but if you've never done this before and you wanna make sure you put your bars back together the right way, use your phone, take a picture of the order in which the controls are on the handlebars. I've seen guys replace their bars and the switches are on the wrong side and things don't work the right way. And believe it or not, if you have things in the wrong order, there could cause some binding in the brake or the clutch or even the throttle. So unique to the Husqvarna and KTM is the map and traction control switch, which actually has to be slid off the bar. It can't be removed by uh, disassembling a clamp. So the first thing we'll do is remove the things from the left side of the handlebar. Start with the grip. The kill switch. The uh, clutch lever is next. And lastly, the map switch, which as I said before, must be slid off the bars. You could take off the little rubber staining straps. Actually, yeah, we need to take the handlebar off before this could be slid because of the wire. Now onto the right side of the bike, start with the throttle. Throttle can just be loosened. And the starter button. Front brake. Make sure you have a flat, flat area when you're working on your bike. You can lay out the parts that you remove in the order in which they go. So this is the left side, right side. Makes everything easier when you're putting it back together. On to the removal of the bar itself. Uh, 
Other things to take notice of are the way the routing of the throttle cables go. Um, in the Husqvarna KTM Gas Gas and Honda, the throttle cables actually sit in front of the handlebar or behind the handlebar. Other bikes routes in front of the bar goes in between the triple clamps. So once everything is loose, the bar is fluid and remove the throttle, remove that pesky map switch. Old bars. See how the new bars, you have to slide it through the map switch. And then you're going to reinstall the bar clamp. It's best to hand tighten these first before you snug them down. So the Pro Taper handlebar has markings that allow you to precisely adjust the bar. If you notice, there are adjustment marks on the left and right. Choose any place on the bar clamp to uh, make sure things are even. Um, depending on how you like to set up your handlebars, riders like Ricky Carmichael like their bars rearward, tall guys may like it forward. Always the best place to start is pretty neutral at zero. So we will set the bars right about there. Snug them down by hand. It's best to try to have even spacing in all the clamps. You don't want to have it more forward or aft. Once your bars are in position, I like to adjust them on a cross pattern. You don't want to over tighten these, but you definitely want them snug. If you're a real stickler, you can refer to your owner's manual for torque specifications. But as my dad said, this is my torque wrench. So you may have noticed I didn't slide the throttle onto the handlebar before I installed the handlebar. That's because we're changing the grips. Pro Taper supplies a uh, left side grip and a right side throttle tube, which comes with about eight or nine different throttle cams that uh, are just designed to fit every single bike. So there's an application chart inside here. I believe the Husqvarna uses cam A. We'll double check right now. Oh, cam four. So we're looking for cam number four. Here we go. I don't know. The rest of these, I'd toss them. All right, so you want to take your throttle apart. Okay, once you get the bolts out, the throttle splits open. You need to make note of the way the throttle cables attach inside the cam. So on in this instance, the cam is facing downward. Obviously the bottom of the grip is the one that has the waffle pattern. So when you reinstall the cam on the new grip, put them down. You can make note of where it is in comparison to the stock one. Get the new cam on, slide the bar on the grip. Reattach the throttle cables. You need to make sure that the throttle cables are in this little channel on the cam on both sides. And bring the two halves of the throttle assembly back together. Always best to start the bolts by hand so that you don't cross thread. These two you want to snug up evenly so that the throttle housing is closed evenly top to bottom. Okay, this is an important part right here to avoid any binding in your throttle. 
to ensure smooth operation. You want to bring the throttle bottomed out on the bar. As you hold that, bring the throttle body back towards you, bottom it out against the throttle cam before you snug it up. This will make sure that the throttle tube does not bind against the edge of the bar because it gives you that little bit of play right there. You don't want the throttle too far off the bar. That leaves the edge of the grip with no support and would cause some binding. So reinstall the mud boot. Double check for smooth, stick-free app actuation. One of the neat features about KTM's Husqvarna's and Gas Gas is that the torque spec is often molded into or engraved into the component. Right here, this is five Newton meters. That's for these two bolts. Again, as my dad said, this is my torque wrench. From that point, you just want to reassemble, reattach the controls to the bars in the same order that they came off. The Kill switch and start switch, you wanna make sure to run the screw upward so that the loose end is not facing downward. Believe it or not, that little tiny edge can catch you in the knees if you hit your leg on the bars. Position the controls as you prefer and snug them down. You don't want to tighten these super tight. You don't want them to spin on the bar, but in the event of a crash, uh, if you have them fastened too tightly, the levers snap. I've seen perches snap off, but if you have them just snug enough not to move, but loose enough that they will spin in the event of a crash, that's the ideal setup. On the left side of the bar, it is best to get the map switch, clutch perch, and kill switch all mounted up loosely before you tighten it up so that you can install the grip to figure out the proper spacing. Okay, so now that we have these three controls loosely mounted, we got our grip. Figure out the positioning of the grip rotation-wise. That looks about right. And then torque her down. This is the beauty of a clamp on grip. So once you have the grip on, that's when you can figure out where the rest of the controls go. So the kill switch is butted up right against the grip. Once again, screw facing upward. I'll get the clutch lever tightened up where you like it. Yep, tightened up. Last thing to do is add the little rubber straps to keep the wires nice. You could also use zip ties or electrical tape. But since the KTM, Husqvarna, and Gas Gas come with these nice little rubber fasteners, we'll reuse these. If you don't ride a KTM, Husky, or Gas Gas, these are available at KTM, Husky, Gas Gas dealers nice and clean. All that's left to do is install the handlebar pad, the newest Pro Taper bar pad, super cool. It's got a high density foam pad, but the, uh, the pad cover is really easy to install. It's long, offers plenty of material to grab the Velcro for a secure fit. There you go. So we have successfully replaced the stock Husqvarna FC250 handlebars with the Pro Taper ACF handlebar, which is a great performer, strong, comfortable, and available at Dennis Kirk. Everybody, thanks for watching. Um, obviously, if you have any subjects you'd like covered, please comment below, and uh, we'll see you next installment.
information on the products shown in this video, click on the link in the description box below. Feel free to call us with any questions or place an order at 800-969-7501. Don't forget to smash that like button, comment, share, and subscribe.